Hey everybody, Palm Springs, Cindy. I'm coming to you from my little den slash office. And I also have a new ring light. It's a smaller one. And so we're, I'm gonna see how this one works. Well, I haven't been on YouTube for over a week. I can't believe it. But some, you know, for sometimes days just go by and I just, you know, I'm lazy or I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, digging into the laundry or working in the backyard or whatever. And I just, you know, I don't even think about YouTube. So, um, so anyway, it's, it's good to be back. And I, um, you know, I have sort of a gab, uh, session for you today. I've had something on my mind that's been bugging me and, um, I'm anxious to see or hear your thoughts about this. Now I, I am prepared. I did write. I did write some things down because and I was talking to Eric about this the other night. By the way, Eric has been out of town. He has a new baby in his family, so he went to visit his family, and um, we did have a conversation about this. Um, and the same, he, he is having the same experience that I am having. So to set, to sort of set the context for this. As you guys know, my mother died about a year ago, and she was 94, and she was part of the greatest generation. And my father fought in World War II and so on. I was born in 1950, I'm a baby boomer. And I remember, um, you know, I remember talking a lot to my mom, um, you know, not when I was a little kid, but when I was older, you know, high school, call, certainly college and, and adulthood, I wanted to know about my mother's life and my father's life. You know, my mother was more, more the talker. So, um, you know, she and I would end up talking, but my dad and I would talk as well. He always, he would share the war stories and what it was like being in World War II. At a young man of 18, just someone who just graduated high school and practically the next day enlisted. So, um, you know, I was curious, I was interested. And also those were, there were social cues going on about, about what and how my mom and dad lived as newlyweds, as children. So, so I got to thinking, you know, I have one daughter and I have siblings who have children and they have children. And none of our kids have asked me, and I bet the rest of my siblings, about our generation. What have, um, you know, are, are they not curious? Or is there so much information? Is this such an information highway now that they already know? But wouldn't you think they would want to hear it from the horse's mouth, so to speak? Because, you know, like I was taught um, when I was teaching history, that it's not so much the, the river of history going from point A to point B, but it's about what's happening um, on, the, at, on the sand, on the shore, along the river. That is the real part of history. What was it like for the people that were living and, and eating and dressing and um, having fun? You know, what, what, was their, what was their society and culture like? Well, okay, I guess nobody cares about mine because nobody has asked me. So, okay, I've written some things down because I think we baby boomers, excuse me, have, I mean, you know, we, um, we are not the greatest generation, but you know what? We have also seen some, a lot of, a lot of movement in our lifetime. So I'm just going to start, I'm going to just hit a few things, more than a few things. Okay. For starters, we were the ones that, um, <laughs> we were the ones that discovered television, you know, not really, but we were the first generation to have television first black and white, and then it, it moved into color TV. And, you know, the, the, the beginning of television, the kinds of shows that they played, you know, there was a lot of the old comedians and things, but then the Westerns and the, you know, the shoot 'em ups and all that stuff. So, 
so we, you know, we grew up and were the, were the first generation to really grow up with television. Now, and also to the fun of watching through the years, watching how televisions have changed the look, the size, the shape, and so on. Um, and then remember when the transistor came out, that was huge. The transistor and, and then, you know, I don't really understand it, but I know that it, we could now have things made small. So like we had radios all of a sudden that we had in our houses and and I think cameras and, and a lot of, it was like a huge leap forward in technology. The, um, my, the first president that I remember was Eisenhower and Eisenhower was, I knew from hearing my parents talk, was, um, you know, the, the leader in the war, the commander in chief in the war. And then um, he also started the freeway system. So he wanted to, after, after fighting World War II, he knew that America was so big and we need to, we needed to have, we needed to get information to back and forth, lickety split as fast as we could. So he, he was the one that got the, the freeways going. Remember polio, we, sur we survived, many of us, most of us survived polio and standing in line at school and waiting for our polio vaccines. Um, we also were, uh, we watched Disneyland open up and, and that whole um, arena of family fun and um, amusement parks and not just the, the Disneyland, but all of Walt Disney's, you know, his cartoons and, and you know, car the animation just was, we were, we were the first to see that kind of animation and the music behind it and everything. Remember that wonderful world of color? That was like one of the first times we got to see television in beautiful color. And we didn't, we didn't have a color TV, but the people down the street had one. And so they would let us come over on Sunday nights and watch Bonanza and or the Disney show with the, with the color TV. We were the um, post-World War II people, <laughs> the Cold War generation, where we had to do the duck and cover because of the the um, the H bomb that everybody was scared to death of, and and it was real. I mean, where there were bullets. I mean, you know, billboard signs. I mean, it was a huge part, totally integrated into our culture. The fear and the danger that you know that the, uh, that atomic bombs could be going off, and you know, Star Wars kind of a thing, and and like after Stalin died, I I think Khrushchev was next, but. Um, and then Khrushchev came to America and couldn't understand why everybody was booing him. But, uh, and, and he went back, I think it was Khrushchev that went back and with the, he was fascinated with cafeterias. So he started uh, cafeterias in Russia. Then we had, uh, now I've seen this on, um, oh, that darling nurse show on, on Netflix. Or can, I can't remember the name of it but it's about the nurses and um, they did an episode or a few episodes on thalidomide. Do you guys remember the thalidomide baby? Um, it, I want to say scandal, but it, I mean, it was more than a scandal. It was just heartbreaking. You know, doctors thought they were doing good, but it, what happened was very deformed babies. And you know, we went through that and our parents went through that and the fear of that and the, the, um, the consequence of that pill. Then we also had, I may be getting these out of order, but um, the whole civil rights movement, the, um, the feminine movement, um, when, and then the, uh, you know, when JFK was president, the Bay of Pigs and Cuba and how, how that, you know, that was, that was really a part of the, of the whole, uh, uh, to, the, I want to say atomic bomb, but it's the hydrogen bomb, the H bomb. You know, that's what I remember hearing. And I remember my mother coming in because my sister and I were like fighting in our bedroom and she flew the door open. She was a nervous wreck and she yelled at us and, you know, said we could be going to war again and, you know, it's going to be horrible and you girls better start praying. And so, uh, you know, that was real scary because it was on the news a lot. And, you know, it was like a stand down and, and who was going to blink? 
And luckily, um, Khrushchev, I think, Khrushchev was the one that blinked. Thank the Lord. Then, the, like I said, the, the civil rights movement, and um, which is huge. And then remember when JFK was president and then he was assassinated. We went to the moon. Um, but it was with JFK's assassination, it was scary because it was it was JFK, it was Martin Luther King, it was Bobby Kennedy, it was Malcolm X, it was, you know, there all of a sudden people were being assassinated and it was like, what is our country coming to? It was scary. And we walked on the moon, I mentioned, with John Glenn. I, I want to talk a little bit about, um, uh, about music. Up until our generation was born, we were really listening to the American Songbook with Sinatra and um, Bing Crosby and, and, uh, and, you know, of course, they're beautiful songs and certainly some of my favorite today. But, but then came Elvis. So our generation carried in rock and roll. Elvis and remember Ricky Nelson. And actually, at that same time, I think the Beach Boys and the whole beach surfing uh, music. And, and that's when I lived in Los Angeles by a beach. And I was at the beach on the during the summertime. We'd go all the time. One of my friend's dads worked down there. And so we'd ride to work with him in the morning and he'd bring us back at night after his job was over. But, you know, it was a real beach boy, um, surfing USA um, culture. And then, of course, with Elvis and Ricky Nelson and, you know, the beatniks. So we, we phased out of the American songbook. Not that that's going anywhere. Of course, it's not. But then our generation's music kind of loaded up and we were privy to that a lot because of Ed Sullivan, the Ed Sullivan show. And, you know, he had every new um, artist on for us youngsters. Well, not even our age for adults as well. And then we had the Dick Clark show and he, you know, he had the Motown thing and well, anybody that was singing that the teenagers liked would go on his show. So we, you know, that's how we were privy to the rock and roll type music. And we had radios and LPs. And then, um, let's see, then the British invasion, the whole Beatles and the Stones and, you know, that whole music culture came in from, well, it was called the British invasion. And let's see what else I hear that, um, Woodstock was such a pivotal, a real glimpse, a real snapshot into the the counterculture of of I'm going to say uh, adolescent young adults that dropped out of society that started you know peace love um, well and then of course the computers technology took off like crazy. So, and then that has totally changed our world. But when we were still young, like when, from when I was born till 1960, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten. I remember, you know, all of all of that. Um, you know, little things like um, blue chip stamps, green chip stamps that we would, my mom would have us kiss, lick, lick them, you know, and put them in the books, and then we could go to the redemption center and pick something out. And my mom one time bought this big, like in like in the um, beauty salons, giant metal hair dryer, you know, on a stand that you put the cap thing down. It looked like a big bullet or something. You put capsule, you put it down over your hair. And people in the neighborhood used to come over, you know, Jerry, can we use your dryer? And she's like, sure, come on in. So, you know, we would go and, re and redeem things from the uh, green chip, blue chip, stamp redemption centers that's something our you know our kids don't know and or why, why would they why would they they don't ask us do your kids ask you about you know and fashion and you know cosmetics i i love talking to my mom about cosmetics when she was a teenager and you know we grew up i know i grew up where we didn't have blow dryers or anything like that. I mean, we washed our hair, 
and maybe sat outside or something and I'd put curlers in it and half the time the next morning when I would, got up to go to school, my hair would still be wet. But then we got those little, they came in like a little round suitcase and they were the plastic, um, the plastic thing you put over your head, like a shower cap, and then you put the hose in it and it'd blow up and then the hot air would help your hair to dry. Then we got smart and took the hose out and, and just, you know, got a head start blowing our hair dry before we put our curlers in. I remember I was in college when it was like spring break and my sorority and I, we were going down to Newport Beach for like five days or something. We had rented a house as a sorority group. And some of the gals had electric curlers. I was blown away. I was still using rollers and putting my, on my cap, my, um, my I'm going to call it the shower cap. <laughs> I was blown away. And all of the gals used them. I mean, we were plugging those suckers in as soon as they took the curlers out. That, you know, they put them in to reheat. And then it was, who's next? Because you could, you had a hairdo just like that. Oh gosh, I'm getting so carried away. <laughs> Speaking of hair, you guys, I cannot live without this stuff. Since my hair, the gal colored my hair so dark, you know, my gray just came right in like seven days later. And so I really use this and just spray along my uh, part lines. I just happen to have that because I didn't, I, I need to color my hair. Moral of the story. Moral of this story is, I want to hear from you. Have your kids talked to you about our generation? Now, maybe they're thinking, well, you know, we're not that old. We're not ready to die. <laughs> but who knows? And I wasn't waiting for my mom to die before I asked her and my dad stuff about their life. You know, like I said, my mom's makeup, hairstyles, my grandma too, uh, you know, that my grandmother and my mother, but my grandmother was the generation, you know, they always wore hats and gloves. She had these beautiful hat boxes in her closet up high and hat pins in this velvet ball on her dresser. And she would get the, her, um, like I would go, oh, grab that box is so pretty. And then she would go, oh, honey, I'll take it down. She'd bring it down, and open it. And there's tissue all in there and stuffed in the hat and covering the hat. And well, it was, and that also reminds me, my grandmother, <laughs> I don't know why I thought of this. My grandmother smoked. Well, they, my, everybody in my family smoked in those days. But my grandmother's on a, um, oh, this is a funny story. I, mean, I shouldn't share this, but I will. My parents very seldom left us kids alone. I could count on one hand how many times we had a babysitter. My grandma and grandpa, we lived in a duplex in Westchester, right by the LA airport. And so we were, uh, we lived in the back and my grandparents lived in the front. So my grandparents babysit me. I don't know what happened to my older sister and my other siblings were not born yet. My grandmother babysat me and it was New Year's Eve. I'm sure she had a bottle of champagne out and um, we were watching the stuff on, I was just little, I was probably five or six. And she had uh, this, she had like this cigarette, all this cigarette paraphernalia. She was romancing the tobacco and she had col cigarettes colored in pastels that all lined up in gradients of in color intensities, you know, like dark, light blue, blue, the turquoise, the, the, the green, then the peach, then the red, with gold filters. She had those beautiful, <laughs> beautiful lighters. You know, the guys like those, you know, kind, but she had like, it was all gold looking. And to me, it was, looked like gold. And then she, like, oh, that was just beautiful. Beautiful ashtrays. Well, so anyway, she would totally, she would let me smoke. She'd go, here, honey, have a cigarette. You know, it's like it's New Year's Eve. <laughs> it's like, really, Grandma? She's like, oh, yeah, honey, aren't they pretty? Take one. What color do you want? And so I did. I would smoke. I mean, I don't I don't think I inhaled, but I would, I probably held it. I think she even had, like, cigarette holders. I mean, she was quite the, quite the lady, I'll say. And so anyway, yeah, it was hysterical. I have that, I have that memory and I can still see that box, it was like a box of 
colored pencils almost, but they were cigarettes and they had gold filters. It was beautiful. Okay, you guys, just a few little memories. <laughs> and um, I want to hear from you. Yes, I love you. Mwah. Until our next conversation. Bye-bye. And I just realized I made this whole video with my one earring. <laughs> well, nobody's perfect. <laughs>